right, I'm in Baltimore in the middle of February on a snowy 30 degree day. And I'm gonna visit the house where the Star Spangled Banner flag was made. And uh, this little house is the uh, actual house and uh, museum's back here. And uh, yeah, it's what inspired, of course, the uh, national anthem. And uh, it's famous uh, for surviving the uh, Battle of Fort McHenry during the uh, War of 1812. So check this place out. All right, so here it is. Uh, this is a replica of the exact same size as uh, Mary's flag. And uh, you'll see 15 stars, 15 stripes. And uh, the original is uh, actually in the Smithsonian. walking through the museum and uh, check this out this is uh, one of the mortar bombs that was used uh, by the uh, British they launched over the walls at Fort McHenry and uh, 186 pounds oh wow this is an actual snare drone oh, it's pretty good uh, pretty good condition Scott Key and uh, written during the War of 1812 uh, after the Battle of Baltimore and the uh, British Navy was out in the Baltimore Harbor uh, lobbing mortar shells over the walls of Fort McHenry uh, all night long. Um, the, the siege actually lasted 25 hours and uh, <clears throat> yeah and exploding shells were a uh, new technology or not, not new, but it, it wasn't commonplace. So it was a pretty spectacular sight just watching the shells explode in the air, bombs bursting in air. <laughs> and the, uh, yeah, the whole city was lit up. The whole uh, city was uh, rocking from the concussion of the explosions. And Francis Scott Key was actually in the harbor on a ship uh, neg negotiating the uh, release of some soldiers. And uh, yeah, he watched the uh, battle all through the night. And uh, in the morning, he was surprised the flag was still there. And uh, yeah, so uh, after that, he uh, he penned the song, and the the song was put into put to uh, music of, of an old uh, English drinking song. And uh, yeah, there you go. And then in the 1930s, a bill was passed uh, by uh, Herbert Hoover, and uh, it became our national anthem. So. So inside the house, and uh, just to let you know, this place was built in 1792, and of course this would be the kitchen, all the usual stuff, it's like some sort of nutcracker. <laughs> this thing down here is a toast maker, I guess from the 1700s, you'd stick the bread in, once one side was toasted, you'd kick it, spin it around, toast the other side. So this room would be the office. And uh, here's the receipt for the flag. Um, in today's money, it came out to $9,000. That, that was actually make two flags, the larger flag and then a smaller uh, storm flag. So that's actually not bad money. And there's Mary Pickerskill, and uh, the woman who made the flag and uh, just to tell you the story on her, she was born 1776 up in Philadelphia. Uh, she moved back and forth between Philadelphia and Baltimore, ended up settling back here in this house in 1807. Uh, she was renting the house. She, uh, she moved back here with her mother uh, and her daughter. So yeah, that's when she started her flag making uh, business. 
And then in 1813, she was commissioned by George Armstead, uh, the leader over at Fort McHenry, uh, to make this uh, giant flag. And he wanted a flag lar large enough that the, uh, the English couldn't miss it. Uh, the flag is 30 feet by 42 feet. Uh, it took nine people to hoist it up the uh, flagpole. It weighed 50 pounds. Uh, just to let you know the stars tip to tip uh, are two feet. Uh, each one of the stripes is two feet across. And uh, yeah, it took her a, a team of six people. And uh, the team included her, her mother, her daughter, a couple nieces, and a uh, lady from the neighborhood, an indentured servant, a uh, freed black woman actually. Um, yeah, all, all made the flag, so. And, uh, all right, so yeah, then um, she eventually ended up buying this house, which is a pretty good feat for the day for a, for a woman. And uh, after her flag-making days, uh, she got into humanitarian work. Uh, she became a social worker, and uh, she opened a, uh, and they called it a woman's aged home and then a men's aged home. And uh, it was eventually moved to uh, Towson, where now it's called the uh, Pickers Gill Retirement Community, so named after her. So back out into the cold. And uh, I don't know if you saw that sign back there, but I I'm in Little Italy right now. and walking down Pratt Street, kind of the main artery going through the Inner Harbor. And uh, just some quick Baltimore history. Uh, Pratt Street was named after Charles Pratt. Named after Charles Pratt. Uh, member of uh, Parliament uh, over in England in the late 1700s. And uh, famous, he was famous for opposing the Stamp Act. That's why we liked him so much. So, yeah, Street was named after him. And later in his career, he became a Lord, a uh, member of the House of Lords. And uh, he was known as Earl Camden. And that's where Camden Yards came from, the uh, Orioles uh, Stadium. And uh, several cities uh, around the country, uh, Camden, New Jersey, Camden, Maine, all, all named after him. So, 